Okay, people, welcome back to another Foosh Play Day. It's Play Day. This Play Day has quite a few more actually produced by company toys than usual, but that's okay because I'm playing. That's what it comes down to. I just wanted to play and mess and open things and see what was going on. But then we get into customs and things that people have just made and sent my way. And I, I just, it hits me right here every time. Now I'm not saying that a company like Spiro Toys or Skeletron, they're not putting their heart and soul into the product. I'm just saying there's a lot of creative people out there. And that's the whole point of a play day is just getting to look at people's creations. As always, if you're watching this and something tickles your fancy, all the links are in the description. So if you want to know more or maybe grab you something, head down there. First up, there's the Robo Skull Red Shadows Assassin Skeledrones. I have too many lights. Just look at this packaging, the artwork, the logo right there. Bam! Skeletron Robo Skull Mark II. Warning, choking hazard. Don't put the little pieces of plastic in your mouth, please. It's just clean and nice. And then on the back, sort of a checklist. File card. Just an excellent presentation overall. Unpunched card. I almost hate to open them. Almost. And you know what? In the package, I thought, I wonder what kind of articulation is involved here. But the way they packaged it is brilliant. You have your spread out legs in flight mode, kind of. And then you have your walker mode. And then you have your front view. Yeah, it just shows you what they're meant to do. Oh, it's a ball joint right there. It's with a cutout. So you can bring them all the way down. I'm calling this flight mode. There's a little and you rotate this and this and this and this and you have your scary walker mode and then the head pops off and you can use these on three and three quarter figures and there's just a ball joint under there. I don't have any three and three quarter inch figures so these will stay drones in my display. In fact, I need to figure out a way to have them floating. I guess I could do little stands. Oh. Is that what that hole's for? <laughs> just so much fun. Oh, come here. It'd be neat to have a shelf or just overrun with these. The wash is a nice effect. It's just, <laughs> it's neat. If you want to order some of these, link is in the description. Next up here is a factory sample of Spiro Toys Animal Warriors of the Kingdom. Jason sent this out just to let me take a little test drive. I wanted to see what was going on here and I, <laughs> this is not final product. Right off the bat, when I pulled it out of the package, I noticed this. That is because the torso isn't sonic welded shut. When that's all the way closed and sealed up and everything, that'll be much tighter. But it does give an idea of the range of the butterfly. And it's the same at the ab crunch. Because this isn't all the way closed, the ratchets aren't engaging. So there's no detents. But still, look at the range on that. Also, those discs are going to be the right color on the final product. Otherwise, damn impressive. The animal parts, nice and natural. I like this fade from the lighter brown to the darker here. And then has it tied in the back. Got that ferocious look to his face. Has some fur on the biceps and on the arm. Then on the upper legs and on the lower too. But that brings us... Oh, well, okay. There's the feet and the hands, of course. But I think my favorite thing isn't actually visual, even though I, I'm loving the look of this, but it's more of a technical aspect. The shin guards are rubber overlays. So it works as a knee pad and a foot guard, but it gets up and out of the way of articulation. If you want to go full forward with the foot, that's not a problem. Bend at the knee, come around. Yeah, it sticks out, but it's not going to get in the way. Plus, it's safer. <laughs> I'm not stabbing myself on it. Elbow pad comes off of that, but it's a soft plastic piece. And then it comes down over the hand, but again, flex. It's the same with the lower hang down pieces too. Little thicker and it comes around the back, but it's split right here to allow the legs to come all the way up. And on this one, I love the colors. Everything blends together. It's very color coordinated. The golds, the dark browns, the lighter browns, just everything flows. There's the sword, nice gem right there. I think I love the damage to it. This thing's been used a lot. I have a short sword or a dagger of some kind. Again, with the browns, but the silver works against the color scheme. It stands out. But bring the gold and the browns back in for this shield. And oh, so ornate. I love the sculpt work coming around and out and how these jaws form the corners. And then on the back, there's two holes, one handle. You can flip to left and right if you want to. Here, 
put it in the hand, it'll go up the arm, or if you want it in the other hand, flips over here. Then there's also this alternate head accessory adventurer. There is a note missing pupils. I guess there will be pupils on the final product, but that just changes up the look a little bit. In fact, it's a whole different character. There's a ball joint at the bottom of the neck too, so ball, hinge, ball. The colors stand out a little bit more than this head. That still works. And then scale-wise, here it is with the Hasbro Star Wars Black Series version 1 Stormtrooper and the good old Marvel Legends comic book Black Panther. I need to upgrade both these. Feels like these are closer and closer, right around the corner, so I can't wait to see the rest of them. Next up here is super action stuff, Casket of Cruelty! I was gonna say it's one of those P.O. Box surprises, but most of the stuff I get at the P.O. Box is a surprise. Big old plastic wrapper. And I was hoping this would be the case. <laughs> the, the, the case. I was hoping this would be sculpted and textured so you could use this as an actual casket. And you can, look at that. It's got the sculpted detail like the planks and the wood coming across, the nice paint job. And then, ooh, am I smuggling things? Everything's just loose in there and you gotta kinda dig through it. Some assembly required too. Ooh. Just made a mess all over my view space. Have some blood splatters. Oh, wow. Okay, that's some big blood splatter. Have some smaller ones and some goo and gore in there. Is that brain matter? Is that what that is? Because here's the brain. Some smaller blood splatters, some medium blood splatters. Oh yeah, there we go. Drip, 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 that's creepy. More blood. Another fountain of blood with matter in it. I see what they did here, that's cool. So you can have this circular saw or pop that off and you can pop on the more traditional chainsaw attachment. There's a flying eyeball. Two flying eyeballs. Nail gun. Sweet. Boxing gloves. And they're nice and open so you just pop the hands off any figure. Maybe put some blue tack in there. Swiping effect. Is this gonna be this one? Yes. Did I even show the sword? If I didn't, there it is. Got a nightstick. Very nice axe with the gold handle. And I especially like the metal effect at the blades. A crossbow bolt? And then another one with surprise and blood splatter on it. Again, maybe put some blue tack right there. Oh. Another attachable blood splatter? Belt or a bow or something? What is... Oh, is there a crossbow attachment? Okay, I went back. That is one thing to watch out for. If you're tossing this, make sure everything is out of it. I don't think there's anything else. That should... Yep, there we go. You can't load it, but... <laughs> you can see the after effects of it. What in the hell just happened? Is this a cricket thing? I, I, mm, and then a riot shield with full on clear plastic. There's handles, there's straps. Yeah, that's nice. That's a hell of a haul when it comes to accessories, plus the nifty case that will forever <laughs> drop little paper pieces on. But yeah, that is nice this is currently up for pre-order should be shipping very very soon i have a link to big bad toy store in the description but it's also on entertainment earth or their own store superactionstuff.com here's a cool little pickup well not a pickup it's an ambulance this is a good get from figures toy company when i think figures toy company i think uh larger scale figures are usually covered in cloth a bit more basic but when veebs told me about this i think it was around black friday cyber monday they had this for $32, but even right now, if you go to the website, link in the description again, it's $39.99, I believe. And yes, it is very basic. You have a sticker here on the front that says ambulance, headlights, just have a piece of clear plastic on it. This is a sticker right here that is mostly already coming off. Some vents on the back, have the hatchback, and it comes with a figure. The top comes off. It is, oh, okay, it's a little tight. And that gives you access to the inside. There's a winch in the back for some reason. You could open this up. Doesn't do a lot. There's a trench for it to drop down slightly, but it, it doesn't stick up. Then there's a plane seat in the front and this is the figure it came with. And he ripped the steering wheel off. How dare you, sir? Again, Figures Toy Company, this is what I think of. Just kind of cloth covered, basic figure. Still, this adds into the $40 value, you know? Put the steering wheel back on, not a problem. The roof has a feature for whatever reason. You slide this door back and it pops this clear piece up that says ambulance. For me, it feels more like a, a gun turret pops up and then this is a shield in the back. That makes more sense, but it's an ambulance. That's okay. I can find uses for that. Then the only other feature is this door pops out a little bit and slides open. 
to about, well, okay, right there if you really push. Basic, basic mechanism. It has this piece, and as you slide forward, it pops the door back into the shell. Not bad. Good size with your standard 112th figure. In fact, they advertise this for wrestling, which skews more seven inch. I'm considering this more of a background piece or a facade. You could put figures in it, but I may throw some green and yellow paint at this because it does look turtle vanish, right? In fact, I think Veebs is using his for movie style since it was a white van and the wheels do roll in case <laughs> that's a biggie for you. I think I've shown off this custom morph head in a previous play day, but now I have it all together with the official Hasbro Marvel Legends morph body with the cell shading removed. I know morph didn't really exist like this outside the animated series, but I wanted a little morph representation with my Jim Lee team. And when I saw this head on Casting Cave, I thought, I've got to do it. Just took some nail polish remover, paper towel, wiped it away, then wiped it with water real quick before it could burn the plastic. So it comes out as a, you know, Jim Lee morph that goes on my comic shelf. And now you can expect Hasbro to release one without the cell shading here in the near future because that's how it works when I make a custom. But speaking of casting cave heads and X-Men figures, here is the Cockrum Storm head for your first appearance Storm figure. Like I always say about Marvel Legends X-Men figures, I may replace the heads, but the ones that came stock, there is nothing wrong with this. It is Storm in plastic form, but I can't resist the extra TLC of a third party head. It makes it a bit more artist specific, which most of the time Hasbro tries to avoid. There's the flowy billowiness of the hair, the hair piece integrated into the sculpt itself. And then Corey's awesome at matching skin tones while adding just a little bit more oomph to it. I would have went the rest of my life with this perfectly happy, but now that I have this, I'm just a little extra happy. I also grabbed one of his larger Han Solo head sculpts. This is a custom indoor Han I threw together before Hasbro released their official version, but then the head that comes on, oh, well, okay. I'm gonna say this is probably one of their better attempts at Harrison Ford. Like I said, you get into the third party stuff and there's more elbow grease. Plus I can't help putting casting cave heads on all my Han Solos. They just make them so much better. And you can see the size difference for the Black Series compared to your SH Figure Arts custom heads. You could probably say casting cave and solo figures go Han and Han. Han, 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 Han and Han. Now I have featured Would You Kindly Studios bases on previous play days, but I got another one. So I thought, look at this thing. First glance, it looks like stone steps with moss growing in between. But then you get to the side. Well, okay, that's painted black, but I, I don't see how people can do this. If I threw this together and tried to make something, it would look like this just stacked up, but y'all some magic workers, y'all some wizards. And now instead of just the plastic risers that I use on the shelves right now, I can put this in somewhere and have it more dynamic, more colorful, more natural. I will never cease to be amazed by creative minds. That's my whole philosophy when it comes to play days. This next one, I have to apologize because Carver Customs actually gave me this back at PowerCon, but I'm terrible about luggage and backpacks and everything like that. So it wasn't until I went to take my next trip on vacation, I was unpacking and then I found this. I'm like, Son of a bitch. Look at this torch. You have the metal running down, you have the flame up inside of it, but you've already seen the wire running down right to a battery pack. Watch this. It even has a flickering effect to it. It's, I gotta find somewhere to mount this. Or somebody to hold it and wrap the wire up around their arm and hide it under a cape back behind or something. The torch will lead your way. I think I'm lost. So if you're interested, Carver Customs on Instagram. I believe I saw you on an Ethan Page vlog too, didn't I? You're all over the place. Sketches by Wise Guy sent me a custom head sculpt for Star Wars Baylert Valance. Valance? Valance? I don't know. I just know I need him on my shelf. And I've said it many a time, so he sent this along and it's my starting point. I haven't decided where I'm going with it yet. I think this is going to be the sleeves because he has that kind of padded stripey look on the side. And I may use these legs just down to the knee, put some bigger, chunkier, thicker boots on there. And then I can't get away from the torso looking like Bucky. So 
I may try to use this somehow. But I'm also considering parts from Deadpool movie Cable because of the robot arm here, which just so happens to be the same side as Valance. And then I ran across this just today, and it's got the collar piece, but it's asymmetrical. I don't know. I may mix looks, give him a thick kind of look with these arms and these legs and maybe these no not those boots i'm gonna have to find some boots it's fun to try to figure out all the parts to put together but it's also frustrating because i'll go looking for that perfect part so i don't have to do any sculpting or anything and most of the time it doesn't exist but i'm getting old enough to where i go you know what it doesn't have to be 100 percent perfect i'm still warming up to this we'll see what happens but thank you for this because this was the biggie i mean yeah i can fudge body parts and everything but it's the head i didn't want to take an existing head and hack on it to make it half robot but still recognizable on one side you know so this being strictly this character yeah oh maybe i'll have to use this neck too because Check out this custom Merman. Robo, here's a figure of Merman that I did back in 2016. Hopefully you enjoy him and he finds a place within your collection. Also check out my other customs on Instagram at token underscore customs. I wasn't big into this era of Masters of the Universe, but I always appreciated this design for Merman. Those figures didn't have double joints and butterflies though, did they? I am pretty sure that some of these parts are Toy Biz Marvel Legends. Whatever it is, the Merman parts are perfectly integrated. It works so well and I love the darker green color scheme with the bursts of oranges and reds against it. It just, oh, this totally works. I'm a classics guy, but I would take a series of Masters figures like this. How did you paint all this to where it doesn't come? Or was there a green base body? Hmm. Well, no, there's also fins right here on the outside. Or did you put those fins on there? Yeah, I don't even have a master's display at the moment, but this is going into... Because this is the right size for my Marvel Legends and everything else that I have on display. This will just be Merman off to the side looking badass and if i'm missing something obvious with the base body let me know but be nice come on now <laughs> it's getting to the point where i can't remember every single body out there there's a fin back here too hmm i always love getting a package from rebel 10 customs because i just know it's going to be good she knew i didn't care too much for this quilt that the adventure comic leia originally came with here's what i have on it now i'm just now putting it on here so i'm still messing with it it needs to be dropped in here and i need to get the wires all straightened out because there's some flow to it and i can change this and around but it's already looking better because it gets up and out of the way of articulation and see how this kind of comes across scarf style and hangs down she even replicated that with a wire and bring it down and around and again i've got to get it to where it lays right but once i do ooh. also i had to pop the head off to take this off I took the opportunity to dull down the face which looks a lot better well okay there's still maybe some sweat right there maybe i didn't get the coverage where i wanted to but it looks better hell the whole figure looks better she's ready to just run across the galaxy also in the package was this cape for controller wave thor the herald of galactus thor the problem there is i don't have that figure yet <laughs> yet i have enough pieces of controller to want to finish him off and now that I have this to spruce it up, I, and Galactus, I might as well get it, right? Because look at this. There's the wire going across. There's the stripe. There's the purple on the inside. This is just quality. I'm always down to replace the hard shell candy capes with something way more dynamic. Something that works with me when I go to pose the figures. And then she also sent along some spider webs. I'm not quite sure what this is. This one is really flexible. I think she wrote that she was working on this to replace the underarm webs for one of the Spider-Mans, but as is, this just works as a, you know, web to stick somewhere. Cause there's also this thicker one that I can cut up and move. This is interesting though. Hmm. And then for more soft goods, she also sent along a Santa hat. Tis the season. And then to finish it up, you may get sick of seeing these, but I always love seeing more robo heads. I can't help it. Different styles, different robos standing in different displays. 
all day. These are from Custom Chef on Instagram. And I like that they're slightly stylized. When I first got them out of the package, I thought, well, okay, I have two of them. But looking closer, this one's a bit more just neutral, like going with the flow. This one's angry. There's also neat little things that I pick up on when I get really, really close, like the glossiness on the lip that's just barely peeking out there. And it's the same for the eyes. It's just little itty bitty attention to detail. Plus the skin tone's damn close. The shading I'm just now picking up on. Maybe I'll use the calm head to become a member of Hellfire Club. And the angry one will be the, the hillbilly inquisitor or something. So at the end of the day, any day you get to play is a good play day. Of course, if you play for the day, it's automatically called a play day. Play. Just have fun with your toys. Whether it's keeping it in the box or cracking it open, giving it some poses, putting it on the shelf, or putting it in a box, or continuing to play with it, or ripping it apart, painting it up, doing some sculpting, buying some parts to put on it, some cloth goods. There's no wrong way to do this. As long as there's some joy going on. Up here, right here, ain't nothing wrong with that. So again, if you see something you like, or just want to, you know, let them know, hey, you did a fantastic job, all the links are in the description. Go show them some love or buy some custom product or buy some figures that are on the way. If you enjoyed this play day, comment, like, subscribe. Much, much love to the plus if you're interested in seeing videos early or in a position to help out the channel, patreon.com. But wherever you may be watching this, I'll always catch you on the foosh. Gotta keep playing because as soon as you stop playing, that's when they get you. They're always right around the corner, right behind you, right over your shoulder, just waiting for you to lose that happiness and uh, rah, pounce. You gotta keep them at bay. You gotta keep the wonder going. What you get out of the hobby is up to you. And you, you gotta grab onto all you can while we have time. Cause you just never know.